The federal election is over and now, for the Labor Party at least, the soul-searching begins. Against expectations, personality politics worked for Scott Morrison and his message of aspirational individualism resonated with voters. Hmm. Professor Mark Steers is director of the Sydney Policy Lab at the University of Sydney and he joins me now for a look at why the election took most of us by surprise. Professor Steers, thanks for joining us. Now, aspiration, it, was, it really has been a buzzword for the coalition. Was this missing? from the case put forward by Labor? Well, I think Labor will be kicking themselves in lots of ways you know, in the next few weeks. One of the things they'll be angry at themselves for is talking a lot about how they were going to spend money and who was going to get what, and not an awful amount about how they were going to make money or where the wealth was going to come from. Uh, so I, I think Labor, it, it's, it's not anti-aspirational, but the sense of you know, what's the, where's the future profits going to come from, where is prosperity going to come from, was probably absent from the Labor campaign. Labor's slogan was a fair go for Australia, and we know the coalition had uh, the very rehearsed line, a fair go for those who have a go. Now, at the time, that was slammed by many commentators, saying, you know, that's conditional on people, um, also slammed by many groups. But does that sort of thing resonate with the wider Australian public? Uh, there'll be definitely some people who think, look, you know, unless you put, put some effort in, you shouldn't get anything back. Uh, so, you know, there are, there are a certain number of voters for whom that kind of messaging works. A lot of those people are Liberal voters already, so <laughs> it's not easily apparent to me that they were swing voters, that they were moving into the Liberal column because of that kind of messaging. I think more, of, more people were probably impressed by Scott Morrison's sort of calmness, this mm -hmm. sense of safety, don't take a risk, you don't know what the bill is. You know, these, these are the kind of lines, I think, which probably swang people from one side to the other. And it was a very presidential campaign from Scott Morrison, uh, very much about him versus Bill, as you just said, versus Bill Shorten or the Bill We Can't Afford, as he put it. Um, do you think that was a large part of what worked? Yeah, I mean, the, it, Scott Morrison had to do that. I mean, he, he, yeah, didn't, he, he, didn't, no he didn't want to do it. But you know, the Liberals have been fighting like rats in a sack for months. Uh, he couldn't put forward any new policies because they couldn't agree them, you know, on the Liberal benches. Mm. So he had to rely on his own personal popularity. Uh, and I think lots of people thought that won't be enough. You can't run a campaign without a policy platform. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't run a campaign without being able to wheel out all the former leaders of the party mm -hmm. like Labour did. But actually, it, it was enough. And, you know, you've got to give Scott Morrison a huge amount of credit for being able to win a campaign effectively on his own. Yeah, it's kind of like a forced experiment uh, yes. that, that pulled off. Now, it was a largely policy-free campaign, as we just said, from the coalition. So was there aspiration in that? Yeah, I mean, safety, I think, is really the message that works. It's sort of, don't rock the boat, you're doing OK. The economy might be you know, not exactly booming, but it's all right for most people. Uh, you know, Australia hasn't had the kind of economic turmoil that other countries in the world have. And I think people, you know, people bought that message, essentially, which is that it's just too risky to change. And I think from the Labour side, they probably didn't do enough to to say what the change would look like. So, you know, they were asking people to switch government, you know, get rid of Scott Morrison, put in Bill Shorten, and people were asking, well, what are we going to get from that? Uh, and I think that was probably never quite clear enough to enough people to take the risk. Well, can we look at aspiration, you know, as Australia as a whole, as we're talking about growing the, the whole economy, but people often look at it just at their level and how, how they can obtain those aspirations. Negative gearing, that would have to have been a, a big ticket item for those that uh, are getting the benefits of it and those that feel that they will. It's, it's really at an individual level, isn't it? Yeah, although I, I think no one policy ever wins or loses an election. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the negative gearing debate has become a sort of go-to. You know, you see the Labour leadership candidates already arguing about you know, how many votes were lost because of the negative gearing policy. Uh, my, my sense is that that's a bit of a red herring, mm -hmm. that actually it's an overall story that matters. It's you know, a very simple line. You, do you really think you're going to be better off with this guy or the other guy yeah. in this instance? Uh, and the, the individual policies are small small parts of that bigger picture. And that's why Scott Morrison could win with, without any policies, yeah. you know. It's that he didn't have to say this little thing matters or that little thing matters. He had an overall story, which is don't take the risk with the other guy, he'll squander your cash. And that resonated. And, I mean, being largely free of policy like that, it's along those lines of small government, even though, as we say, mm. it was kind of forced in this case, do aspirational Australians essentially identify with small government? You stay out of our way, 
we'll do what we can to get ahead. Yes, sometimes, but not always, I think. So if the big government is exciting enough and it offers enough and it's tangible and people can believe it, they're all in favour of it. So, you know, Medicare remains really popular for that reason. Big government programme, but we know it works. People, people like it. I think where people get more worried is when it looks a little bit vague or a little bit, uh, you know, it's not quite clear whether it's really going to come off. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the case for Labour this time. They were asking people to change but people weren't quite sure exactly what the change was going to look like and whether it was really going to make a significant difference for them. And I think in that uncertainty, they decided to stay with the devil they know. Mm -hmm. Professor Mark Steers, the director of the Sydney Policy Lab at the University of Sydney. Thank you. Thank you.